فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm your host Kareem Abu Zaid and I welcome you all once again to another edition of Let's Talk About It right here on Islam QA TV. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we're coming live from Il Minhal Academy in New Jersey. Uh, Insha'Allah, I want to remind you that tomorrow, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, uh, we're having our annual conference. Uh, uh, very good speakers are invited. Uh, would love you to join us. Um, we have Sheikh Abu Usama al uh, tomorrow coming all the way from Britain, uh, England. Um, right after Maghrib tomorrow, he's going to be uh, giving his lecture. And uh, we also do have Sheikh Okasha uh, Kemni. Uh, a regular uh, host of uh, uh, Let's Talk About It. Uh, he uh, was there with you last night and the night before answering your questions. And also we do have uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane, uh, inshallah, uh, coming all the way from Missouri. Uh, we have Sheikh Mohammed Shinnawi, our uh, local New Jersey. Uh, and also uh, Sheikh John uh, Sterling, uh, that's, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, and a lot of workshops, uh, also a lot of activities uh, for the uh, youth. We're actually going to have like a soccer and, and basketball uh, tournament uh, for the young ones. Uh, uh, we're probably going to have dinner also tomorrow. I think somebody is getting married in the community and, and he is offering a walima for everybody. So, uh, you see, uh, this is the practical way of answering the question uh, that every one of you may be entertaining as we speak. Uh, should I have a turkey this weekend? Why would you worry about this when you have uh, so much activities in your week and in, in your communities during that weekend. Uh, it's very unfortunate, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. This is the theme, of course, of my show tonight. And uh, I'm really trying to uh, show you the practical way. Instead of you sitting out there and, and trying, um, not necessarily in a community level, in a family level, uh, instead of having your family sit at home and, and do nothing and, and then uh, they are nagging, how come we're not uh, mimicking non-Muslims uh, and, and, and why? You see, be practical, offer practical solutions uh, like the one that we're offering, like that conference that we're about to have. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Name, state and question, please. My name is Ahmed. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Brother Ahmed, uh, what is your question tonight? Uh, my question is, could you please tell me what Wahhabism is? All right. It's my pleasure to do that. Thank Jaz you. Jazakallah khaira. All right. Jazakallah khaira. Jazakallah. Barakallah fiqh. So, like I said, uh, inshallah, just to let you know how the show uh, should go, normally the first half hour, we compile as many questions as possible from Facebook. We do have a Facebook page for our show, uh, IslamQA.TV. Uh, Please go and like that page. Uh, that is where, where we announce uh, a lot of our uh, live shows and a lot of the activities uh, 
um, uh, you know, we, we do have an, an offer uh, on Islam QA TV. Uh, and this is the best way to receive information, uh, who is coming tonight to answer your questions, uh, you know, and, 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 and so forth. So, like I want to say, uh, uh, we do have also a phone call, uh, a phone number where you can call us, 1-800-587-9075, and I believe the number is shown on the screen. Uh, if you are looking at your TV channel, it should be on your screen, 1-800-587-9075. Again, the Facebook page, www.facebook.com uh, slash islamqa.tv. This is where you can find us. You can also send a question to kareem at huda.tv, K-A-R-I-M at huda.tv. Uh, I believe islamqa.tv is not working, so we're still trying to fix that email, inshallah. Once it is fixed, we will uh, certainly announce it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Um, Salam in Colorado. Salim from Colorado. How are you, brother Salim? And your question, please. Can I ask? Wa alaikum Ahlan, ahlan, akhi Salim. Barakallah fiq. Hayyak Allah. Kif halak, akhi Salim. You have a question for us tonight? Alhamdulillah. Ya Sheikh, Ya Sheikh, fi baad al, fi baad al nas biyahtaqib inna tags given. ما هوش عيد ديني فالعياذ بالله يقولوا انه اوكي ان نشاركنا المسلم في المناسبه هذه نعم فيا ريت توضح لنا الصوره حاضر ان شاء الله اي ويل هاف تو ترانسليت وات برادر سالم جاست سيد هي اكشلي ريز ذا فلاج ويتش وي ار ريزينج تونايت ان اور شو هي از اكشلي سيينج ذات ا لوت اوف مسلمز ار لوكينج ات ثانكس جيفينج Uh, not to be a religious holiday, therefore it is okay to celebrate it. And we will address this tonight, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, in my show. I will answer your question, Brother Salim. Jazakallahu khaira for your question. And I will answer it, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Barakallahu feek. Again, this is the theme uh, that we're having. Uh, should, uh, because a lot of people say, listen, what is wrong with me eating me and family, a halal, organic, not just halal, not just the biha, organic turkey tonight. What is wrong with that? Insha'Allah will answer this. A lot of Muslims actually are entertaining this thought. Come on, we're talking about eating the biha. The biha turkey. What's wrong with that? Insha'Allah will answer this bi ta'ala. Uh, but like I, I, I started uh, uh, the show, um, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, it is so important that uh, we try to offer solutions uh, instead of complicating. Uh, you, you see, uh, a lot of times uh, when people ask us questions and all what we say, haram, not good, haram, not good, haram, not good, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. We have, especially if the question is in, in the social um, circle of, of, of life, uh, we have to offer solutions, uh, being heads of communities, uh, being heads of families, uh, being, but I'm not asking you to compromise, but uh, like here we are uh, in, in, in New Jersey, we thought uh, this is the ideal time to invite all the family uh, and the children uh, to come and spend the weekend uh, where they end up learning uh, about the religion. Uh, their children can also um, uh, end up with some activities uh, where they have fun uh, doing it bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So give us a call. I'll, I'll, we still have some uh, time to take your phone calls. 1-800-587. 9075 1-800-587-9075 please give us a call bi-idhnillahi ta'ala and you can always uh, post your question on Facebook uh, page insha'Allah uh, this is another way that you can uh, actually 
uh, 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 you know, ask your questions uh, Okay, um, I guess uh, it is time to maybe uh, begin addressing uh, some uh, of the issues. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, it is so weird how some Muslims may uh, think these days. Uh, surprisingly, I heard uh, that uh, it is okay uh, to eat, like our brother Salim just said, it is okay to eat turkey this weekend. Uh, here is the more shocking piece that I heard uh, that there is a community uh, in our locality here in, in the East Coast, and I don't want to name them, who are actually planning to throw uh, a party uh, on Saturday, uh, on Thanksgiving Day, and they want to call it uh, Jazakumullahu Khairan Party. Uh, you see the, 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 the non-Muslims, the Christians, and uh, the Jews, I don't know if Jews do participate this day or not, uh, celebrate this day or not, they call it Thanksgiving, giving thanks. So Muslims thought about what? Uh, what about us coming up with our own uh, version of uh, Thanksgiving? Let's address this uh, without, uh, uh, you know, getting mad, getting upset, uh, getting emotional. Uh, let's address it like students of knowledge, people who acquire uh, the religion of Islam. ثبت ثبوت الجبل الأشم يعني it was authentically, authentically transmitted to us. So many ways that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us not to look like non-Muslims. Whether in the way that we dress, whether once it comes to our rituals, whether once it comes to our celebrations. And I can give examples, so many examples. Uh, you know, once it comes to our, uh, uh, the way that we dress, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has identified a dress code for both males and females in Islam. Uh, uh, even once it comes to uh, uh, brothers uh, regarding their facial hair. Uh, shorten your mustache and uh, let your beards grow and here is the wisdom be different to the Jews and the Christians طيب. once it comes to our rituals look at this Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to pray while wearing shoes of course in the proper places just to be different to Christians and Jews because they don't pray while wearing shoes Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam. Nah, names. Uh, hello, how are you doing, Imam Kareem Abu Zaid? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, uh, this is Uthman Jeremy. Brother Osman, how? Mashallah, Brother Osman, you have a question for us tonight? Uh, yes, I was I was asking about the uh, the holidays. Of course, like uh, I, I don't like to take part in these uh, in the Thanksgiving or the uh, of course the uh, the Christmas holiday and all this and that. And as well, my family. Uh, if someone gets, gets able towards me, may, may Allah uh, guide all of us and bless us all for unity, of course, but I don't like to do all of those things. And of course, uh, cause I, I feel like it is haram. And then, um, so my question is, is of, of course, about this, uh, like a security job that I did where they, they had done a prayer before they served the, the food for the fundraiser, I was doing security. And then they, they said, uh, in, in Jesus' name, uh, Jesus bless this food and this and that. And then, so I, I felt like it was haram to eat the food. Do you think that it was so? That's my question. Jazakallah khan, brother Uthman. I will answer your question, but you're right. I'm glad you did not eat that food. But I will answer your question in more details, inshallah, uh, once I reach its uh, order, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan, brother Uthman. And uh, it's a pleasure to always hear your voice on the show. Uh, Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala will answer your questions 
uh, as we continue addressing that subject of Thanksgiving, which you also uh, brought up. So, uh, again, carrying on here, once it came to rituals, even the way that we pray, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said we can wear our shoes because it makes us different to Jews and the Christians. Okay? Uh, but of course, this would apply uh, to a certain uh, locations, like uh, if you're praying in a park, uh, but you should not be wearing shoes in, 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 in a masjid uh, where there are clean rugs there. Uh, so it is a sunnah, but not the sunnah to pray all the time uh, wearing your shoes. But again, the wisdom behind it was uh, pointed out to be, um, uh, to be different to Jews and Christians. Tayyib. Uh, we're not supposed when the, uh, to pray when the sun is uh, at the central uh, position of the horizon. Uh, why? Because this is when the worshippers of shaitan uh, do observe their worship. That's when they pray. Uh, so again, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like when the sun rises in the morning, uh, when we pray, observe salat al shuruq we have to wait at least 12, 15 minutes until the sun scoots over, you know, scoots away from uh, its, uh, uh, you know, central uh, where it rises. Uh, again, because this is the time when the worshipper of the fire, al-kuffar, or the worshipper of, of shaitan do, do, do perform their worship. Uh, fa, uh, definitely, even once it comes to things that non-Muslims do, non-Muslims do, I'll give you an example. في مسند الإمام أحمد حديث أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Okay, I will carry on from there. Remember مسند الإمام أحمد uh, Again, we're going to talk about things that they do. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته My teacher Sheikh Kareem, how are you? الحمد لله, how are you doing? Who is this? How is your trip back to New Jersey? This is Saeed from Colorado. Oh, Brother Saeed, mashallah, very good, mashallah. I enjoyed it, mashallah. How are you doing, Brother Saeed? Yeah, How's... yeah alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I just wanted to, I'm, I'm making a dua for you, what you're doing for us to Colorado. May Allah yeah, give you uh, rewards and uh, make us and uh, next to the, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, I just call you to give you a little support, but anyway, um, just a small kind of basic question, you know, my, my friends ask, you know, I just wanted to spread the question to everyone. Um, uh, check it, are you there? Yeah, I'm listening to you, Brother Saeed. Go ahead, Jazakallah yeah, Khairan for yeah, your kind uh, words. Yeah, I was at the, I was at Bula, the DMV, and they were asking, uh, uh, like, a. Uh, can we uh, do, do, donate to like uh, as in the, in, uh, in Islamic Sharia like can Muslim uh, donate the organ or a uh, second uh, small like basic question when you when the dog touches you or you know do you have to wash your clothes and uh, uh, make your you do your you do I mean like the hot out again or that's okay. all the question. Jazakallah khair, Brother Saeed. Uh, I will answer your questions, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And I want to say Jazakumullah khair and Denver for your support. Uh, I just want to also share the news with you uh, that we just learned, uh, bi'fadlillahi ta'ala, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, tonight, uh, actually, uh, our brothers from uh, Dar al Tawheed, uh, Colorado Muslims Community Center, uh, just reported to me that their meeting with the senator and the mayor was very successful and they actually received a, uh, an approval uh, from the county uh, to actually uh, allow us to have a masjid in that recreational center. Uh, so we're moving forward with the purchase of that facility, ta'ala, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, especially in Colorado, especially in Denver. Remember December 19th, inshallah, at the Colfax facility, uh, at Masjid Umar ibn al-Khattab after Isha, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, I'm inviting all of you, dear community, don't miss this day, this is the day when we have to come together and uh, raise that down payment in order to purchase that facility. It's an investment for the future of our youth, uh, an investment for the future of our women. 
Uh, it is a necessary place and we could not have it without having a masjid inside it in order to make sure that it's not a fitna creating environment and in order to make sure that it will run according to the Quran and the Sunnah ta'ala and we're so excited and I know a lot of you are excited and I'm looking so much forward to seeing all of you ta'ala on December 19th to raise the necessary amount in order to make the down payment in Insha'Allah and to close on that building. Jazakallah khair, Brother Saeed, for bringing this up. And I will answer your question, Insha'Allah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Masha'Allah. And um, I hope people know uh, it's a big deal uh, what you've been doing, honestly. And we want you back. We miss you, honestly. Uh, please come back to Colorado, you know. Insha'Allah. We love you. Insha'Allah. We love everybody there. And Jazakallah khair, Brother Saeed. And I will see you next month, Insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khair. Yeah. Salaamu alaykum. Salaamu alaykum. Salaamu alaykum. Salaamu alaykum. Mashallah, I am learning that a lot of people are excited there about this project. But Brother Saeed asked two very important questions. Uh, dogs touching you, um, what should we do? And also the other question, organs donation, that's uh, a common question that we receive all the time now. But again, I will answer this uh, uh, on the order uh, uh, I received the questions. Let me go back to the subject here that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Sharia banned us from looking like non-Muslims. Once it comes to dress code, once it comes to even physical facial appearance, and once it comes to even things that we say or things that we do. And then I stopped at the hadith uh, where uh, uh, Imam Ahmad compiled it, hadith Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, and the hadith in the Sunan. Uh, Anas says that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam arrived Medina, when he arrived uh, Medina, uh, okay, let me take that question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmed, and I'm from Canada. Okay, brother Ahmed, and your question, please. Uh, yes, my question is uh, in Surah Imran, uh, Allah says, uh, Laysu sawa no. My question is, does this verse indicate that there are pictures of Ahlul Kitab? No, no. Uh, so, our brother uh, uh, Ahmed is calling from Toronto and he's asking regarding a verse in Ala Imran. Laysu sawa'am min ahli al-kitab ummatun qa'imatun yatluna ayati allahi anaa al-layli wa hum yasjudun yu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhir wa ya'muruna bil-ma'roof wa yanhawna an al-munkar wa yusari'una fi al-khayrat wa ulaika ma'a al-salihin aw min al-salihin wa ulaika min al-salihin wa ma yaf'alu min khayrin falan I will explain these verses for you. It does not indicate so, Brother uh, Ahmed, uh, that there are Christians who uh, can be good Christians without following Muhammad Rasulullah. Just to answer your question right off the bat, but I'll explain to you the wisdom why. Jazakallah khaira. Barakallah feek. Okay, uh, again, uh, the verse says they are not even, they are not equal. Uh, so that, that verse could indicate that there are uh, good Christians, uh, yet they are not following uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They have not accepted the messengership of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and yet they can be good in, in the sense of they can be successful in the hereafter. Uh, you see, when we understand the Quran, we don't understand it this way. We cannot take one verse. Uh, and we have to compile all the verses that address the subject that address and also all the hadith that addresses the subject and then uh, 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 conclude or rule out something. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it crystal clear that no one hears of me whether he's a Jew or Christian and he does not accept my message and says Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah he is a dweller of hell. Okay, uh, it's crystal, it's crystal clear. But this verse actually talks about those who accepted Rasulullah. They are not equal to those who have not accepted Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I had to answer that question uh, because uh, I'm afraid uh, the thought will run away from me. Tayyib, here we go. Uh, once it comes to uh, things that we do, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an tells us that when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived Medina, uh, he found us celebrating two days, playing in two days. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. Naam, name, state and question please. My name is Qais. Qais, 
And your question, Qais? I live in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's, mashallah. And your question tonight, how old are you? Eight. MashaAllah, Qais. All right, let me hear your question. I have two questions. All right, question number one. How old until your bad deeds are counted? Excellent. And your second question, Qais. Are some snakes gins? Excellent. MashaAllah, Qais. Looks like you're really invested in the Islamic knowledge here. These are good questions. Masha Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your parents. Say Ameen Qais. Hmm? Say Ameen. May Allah bless your parents. Say Ameen. Ameen. Jazakallah khairan. I'll answer your questions, Qais. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, should I, should I, you know, I, I, I love these little ones calling in. And you know what, Qais, I'm going to answer a question right now. Because I love you for the sake of Allah, my little son here, my little boy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your uh, parents. Of course, I could expound more in talking about when the deeds are counted. But I don't think uh, based on the... Uh, uh, the, 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 your, 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 the voice that I heard that you're still little, you may not understand very well the signs which would establish the age of puberty. And, uh, I, you know, there are certain signs, physical signs, uh, which I don't want to get into. Maybe you and your parents can discuss it together. But if these physical signs are not uh, uh, found, then to answer your question, Qais, the age of 15 is the cut. Uh, even if these physical signs have not been developed yet. Uh, and hopefully uh, your parents can explain to you, um, you know, when you reach the proper age, uh, these physical signs, inshallah. Uh, but the age of 15 is the final cut, is, is the boundary. Even if you have not reached the age uh, of 15, um, even if you have not experienced uh, these physical signs or you have not seen it in your body, in your private area in particular. طيب, uh, as for your second question, not all snakes are jinn. But some snakes are jinn. I don't know which one. Basically, the answer to your question, yes, Brother Qais, yes, Qais, jinn uh, take on the form of snakes. Certain snakes, they would take their form. But now I cannot say every single snake I see is a jinn. But possibly some snakes out there, jinn occupied them and they are running uh, uh, in their physical uh, form. So we have taken care of Brother Qais's uh, questions. Uh, maybe he needs to go to bed. And we should be considerate of that. But he can continue watching if your parents, probably tomorrow is off, no school. So maybe they are giving you a treat tonight. So welcome Qais. Tayyib. Now when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived Medina, then he found the Muslims, those who accepted Islam, are celebrating the days which the non-Muslims are celebrating. Whether the uh, original dwellers of Medina, Yathrib at the time, or the Jews and the Christians. They are celebrating two days in Jahiliyyah. What are these days? Okay, O Messenger of Allah, Those are two days which we use to uh, uh, play uh, during them uh, at the time of Jahili. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, Inna Allah abdala kuma. You see that? You see, I, I love to stress this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced you, Muslims. Replaced you. That means what? Those two days, the new days, Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha, replacing any other holidays. Huh. Any other holidays. So uh, again, طيب. 
Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam banned us from looking like non-Muslims even in the statement which we make. Pay attention here. I'll share with you a beautiful hadith which I love to narrate uh, to, 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 to prove the point here. Again, brothers and sisters in Islam, we're not going to force you. you. At the end of the day, it's your choice. What do you want to do? But if you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to maintain your identity as a Muslim, hear this. We're not just saying this out of the blues here. We're not just trying to give you a hard time here. We're not trying to complicate your lives here. No, we're just inviting you to live your lives as Muslims. And this is the duty of the students of knowledge. Okay? And in no way you should assume here that I'm asking you to be insulting to the non-Muslims who are having a turkey. No, that's not, another, that's not my issue. Uh, you, you see, actually this is something that I stressed in a previous episode uh, that, uh, you, know, um, uh, uh, you know, in a previous episode, uh, uh, that we should educate the non-Muslims about what we expect and what not to expect so, so that we do not bash them during the holidays. They're holidays, of course. We should actually talk to non-Muslims, let them know that we do not celebrate these days. Okay? I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to participate in your turkey meal. I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to participate in your uh, Christmas party or New Year uh, uh, celebration. I can't because this is what I believe. Why? I, I, I did advise you to do this out of respect to them because people do not like to be disappointed during their holidays. These are special times for them and they wouldn't like somebody to bash them during that time. No, I should prepare them mentally, uh, psychologically uh, beforehand. That's what I said. Add to this, I'm not going to ridicule them or make a mockery out of them because they're eating a turkey. That's their business. Lakum deenukum waliya deen. Uh, you see, me as a Muslim living in the United States, I'm not supposed to go after what they do wrong, according to my Sharia, ah, because we're a minority here. You see, uh, non-Muslims who are living, uh, uh, or Muslims who are living in a country as a minority, they are supposed to convey la ilaha illallah first. First. Non-Muslims who are living in a Muslim country, it is different being a minority. If you have non-Muslims living in a Muslim country being a minority, there is a debate regarding whether they are required to follow the Sharia of the Muslims or not. There is a debate there. We understand. But the debate is settled regarding Muslims living in a non-Muslim country as a minority. We are a minority. The first thing that we're required to do uh, with, with, with respect to non-Muslims is da'wah to what? Not to stop eating turkey, not to stop drinking alcohol, not to stop committing adultery, not to stop usury. No. Call them to tawheed. What is my evidence? Always ask for the evidence. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen. Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas for Sahihain. He said, Ya, Abba, ya, ya Mu'ad, oh Mu'ad, innaka ta'ti qawman ahla kitab. You're going to Yemen, the dwellers there are from the people of the book, Jews and the Christians. Let me the first thing that you call them to is La ilaha illallah. In another wording, لِيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ تَوْحِيدُ اللَّهِ التَوْحِيد خلاص Tawheed first. I'm talking about Muslims as minorities living in non-Muslim community. The, the larger community are non-Muslim. We're supposed to call them Tawheed. I'm not going to call them and uh, go, uh, 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 dear Christian, don't eat turkey. No, I should get them to understand what Tawheed first. Uh, that's, that's not uh, my issue. Therefore, I'm not going to make a mockery out of them because they are doing that. So uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to remove any misconception out there in your mind that I'm inviting you to be mean or rude to your neighbors or co-workers. Absolutely not. That's why Brothers and sisters in Islam, on this show, we said that we should try to educate them about who we are. طيب. Let's take this example that shows you. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal hadith fi sunan al-imam al-nasai bi sanadin sahih, hadith abi waqid al-layfi radiyallahu an sahabi. You know when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, conquered Mecca, 
a lot of people in Mecca accepted Islam. A lot of people became Muslims. But those people were not like the companions who spent all this time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught the Aqeedah. They drank the Aqeedah, the belief system. They, they, they understood. You see, the matter has to do with Aqeedah, by the way. The matter has to do with your belief system. So uh, they are new reverts to Islam. You know, they accepted Islam just a month ago or a year ago. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marched with them to the neighboring uh, adjacent uh, town of Taif to conquer it. Tayyip, what happened? They had to overnight, they had to camp. And from a distance, they spotted the other camp, which is the camp of the disbelievers, having a tree. They called it Thatu Anwat. Thatu Anwat. Uh, they used to consider it uh, a blessing to touch it and to go around it and to hang their swords on its branches. So immediately upon seeing this, those reverts, the newly reverts, the new reverts, the people who accepted Islam just a short while ago, who were not fed the belief system, the aqeedah, I'm telling you, uh, this matter has to do with your belief system, how solid your belief system is. That is where the importance of aqeedah comes or falls in. So they said, Ya Rasul Allah, O Messenger of Allah, look the statement that they made. Ij'al lana dhata anwat kama lahum dhatu anwat. Can we have a tree like them, please, O Messenger of Allah? You know, can we have a Christmas tree, please, 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 please? Isn't that what some? Can I please have a? Can we have a turkey, please? I'm sorry, I'm being silly here, but I'm trying to to, to break down the ice here with with, with you, dear viewers. I, I don't want this to turn into a tension kind of show, and the sheikh is is upset. No, I'm not upset. I'm not angry. I, uh, listen, I believe you know in this i this is our belief system this is our deen this is my identity i'm a muslim i'm going to celebrate what allah uh, told me to celebrate and i'm going to live my life according to uh, listen i'm not going to scratch uh, without a permission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is uh, a command for us not to scratch without a permission but of course that's you can scratch it's it's a free thing so here is the, here is the thing the Prophet Sallallahu told those people, Allahu Akbar, look at the reaction of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Qultum kama qala banu Israel li Musa, ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha. You said exactly like the children of Israel when they did say to Musa, alayhi salatu wassalam, Make for us an idol like them. Now you need to understand this to realize uh, uh, the, the magnitude of that request. Uh, right after uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and Bani Israel from the Pharaoh and they crossed the sea. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a bridge for them. So they crossed and the same bridge caused the Pharaoh and his gang to drown, طيب. and they saw this with their eyes, they saw the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before their eyes, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them and made their enemies drown before their eyes, as soon as they passed, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَ جَعَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَةً قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ As soon as they crossed, they saw some Bedouins in Sinai worshipping an idol. Oh Musa, can we please have an idol like them, please? Oh Musa. La ilaha. Imagine, imagine this. So, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, the point that I established so far, that we're not allowed to mimic the people of the book, 
the non-Muslims in general, in particular, once it comes to dress code, once it comes to physical appearance, once it comes to rituals, once it comes to playing, once it comes to things to say. Tayyib, <laughs> let me ask you this question. Who initiated who initiating, initiated eating turkey on the 29th? Isn't uh, Thanksgiving the 29th? Please correct me if I'm wrong, right? The 29th, right? Isn't that the day or the 27th? The 27th. Who initiated eating turkey on the 27th? In that weekend, who did it? Uh, you answer me. Muslims did it or non-Muslims? Non-Muslims. So now if you do it, even so it's dabiha. Even so, it's organic. Even so, it looks nice and cute. It's mimicking non-Muslims. Should we do it? I just said that we are not allow, allowed to mimic them, to look like them. I think I made my uh, point crystal clear. Tayyib, uh, let me move on to a couple of things here. I think there is a sister whose name is Fadia, and I hope she's watching us tonight. I think she asked me a question uh, and the last time, uh, last time I was on the show, I was unable to read her. Uh, of course, the writing was in English, but she really meant Arabic. Allahumma ajirni min an-nar, saying it uh, after Salatul Fajr seven times. And I mistakenly said that it's never been established. I really thought that she was asking about the supplication which we make after finishing the tashahud in each salah, seeking refuge with Allah from the four things which the Prophet taught us, the punishment in the grave, the fitna of the Antichrist, the fitna of life and death, and the fitna uh, of al-Masih al-Dajjal. So I assumed that, but when I went back and I looked at her question again, she really, I could not read the word ajirna. Allahumma ajirni min an-nar. Yes, dear sister, it was established and it was a mistake by me saying that never been established. This is wrong. It is established in an authentic uh, hadith bi idnillahi ta'ala. Okay, we do have another question here from Facebook. I know you said before that it is okay to wear makeup for your husband, but what if you go out with him to stores and stuff? Uh, is it okay? Sister Zamzam, no, it is not okay. Makeup is for whom, dear sister? Okay, uh, brother Ahmed from Toronto, uh, he asked, what is Wahhabism? Uh, I really have a, a video, brother Ahmed, and I would love, uh, because I mean, for me to sit here, uh, I still have only 10 minutes left. And I'm not running away, by the way, brother Ahmed. I would love to speak about this subject. But who is a Wahhabi? Just Google. Who is a Wahhabi? And put my name next to it, Karim Abu Zaid. It will come. I was asked that question on the same show, uh, on, on Let's Talk About It show. And I answered it maybe in 10 minutes. Please, if it does not answer your question, uh, you know, instead of me repeating it, and probably viewers who are interested in finding out what I said, again, if you Google, who is a Wahhabi? Who is a Wahhabi? Just put my name, Karim Abu Zaid and uh, it will come out for you bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. I think Brother Salim, uh, we answered your question. All this talk was about uh, your uh, question, uh, Brother uh, Salim. Uh, our brother Uthman, uh, he asked about uh, holidays and I think he's clear. I, I think also what I said uh, uh, answering the question of Brother Salim from Colorado, uh, would go in line with what you said that, uh, and I'm glad Brother Othman, uh, if you go by the name of Jeremy uh, or Othman either, uh, we love you for the sake of Allah, uh, you're a revert and here you are uh, pooling it together and you're doing the right thing. Uh, but Brother uh, Othman asked regarding a congregation or a group of non-Muslims who decided to uh, call uh, in the name of Jesus before we eat. Uh, if this is not your plate, uh, of course the food is cooked and it's on the table. If you're away from them and you have your own plate, huh, I would eat it. Just say Bismillah and eat, okay? But if they go ahead and do that for the rest of the food, I wouldn't do it. I would say I'm a Muslim and I cannot eat any food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name was not uh, mentioned uh, upon it. 
or uh, a name of another deity. In this case, we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Of course, as Muslims, we cannot eat that food. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Don't ever eat from that which Allah's name was not mentioned on it. So uh, that is the reason why you should not be eating it. And I think Brother Uthman, you already done the right thing, bi ta'ala. I go to Brother Saeed from uh, Colorado. Uh, Brother Saeed, Jazakallah khaira uh, for your encouragement and, and questions. Islamic, uh, uh, the Islamic law regarding organ donations. Here is the thing. If the only way to save the life of a human being, and I use the word human being, not a Muslim, a human being, whether he's a Muslim or not, is to actually transfer an organ from your body to his body or her body without affecting your own health. So here is condition number one. It must be the only way to save the life of this human being is to receive that organ. طيب. Two, condition number two. This cannot impact your health negatively, meaning that this cannot lead to your death. Okay? Uh, so I take uh, uh, an organ from your body and then this will uh, affect your health. This is condition number two. This cannot be a business transaction. It, it can turn into business, and this is what's happening in the world now. We hear of children being kidnapped and their bodies are sold uh, like body parts. Uh, we cannot do that. Then we can do it. Then we can do it. But here is the thing. Should I go to the MVA, Motor and Vehicle uh, Administration, right? Is that accurate? And pledge that my body, after I die, can be distributed as organs or donated. Can I do this? No, you can't. Why? Because after you die, your body is not your property. Muslims, Muslims, thumma amatahu, then he would decree death upon the human being and then he is to be buried. Muslims are to be buried. You're not supposed to burn your body. You're not supposed to smash your bones like non-Muslims do. Ashes, turn it into ashes. No. What you're supposed to do is bury your body. But let's say here is a scenario. Someone passes away. Right. He is unburied yet. He's not buried yet. And right, let's imagine that he's at the hospital. And then they are looking for a heart. Okay? And the heart of that person who just passed away is the right heart. Can we take it? Yes, you can. Uh, again, it cannot be business. Something that happens on the spot. Absolutely you can. But you do not own your body. That's the point. And, and I think that's the essence of the question of, of our brother uh, Saeed, uh, that the essence of the question here, that after you die, the body is not your property. But if you happen to save the life of another person by giving him uh, an organ, uh, sure you can, provided that this is not going to kill you or have uh, um, side effects on your health, uh, nor it is not uh, a business transaction. Dogs, that's the second question. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the seven times one of them is sent applies to utensils only. And only the saliva. If the dog licks a utensil, plates, dishes, then we have to wash this seven times, one of them using sand. No question. But now, what if the saliva of a dog gets in your skin, gets in your body? All what you have to do is remove it with water one time. That's it. Wash it with water one time. Not seven times, 
no sand, just one tie. That's it. Now, what if the body uh, of the dog uh, uh, comes against your body? Uh, you know, the ones they come and, and just touch you. Uh, now, as long as the mouth did not land, the saliva did not land on your cloth, in your body, you're still in a good shape, provided that you don't, you, you know, you don't, you're not certain, uh, let's assume that you're certain that this dog always licks himself. You know, some dogs, they keep licking their body and, and their skin. If you're certain that dog lack, uh, does that, and there was witness on that skin, on the hair, um, then probably you need to remove this with water bi-idnillahi ta'ala. All right. I think we answered the question of Brother Ahmed uh, regarding laysu uh, sawa'a. Brother Ahmed, uh, this verse uh, uh, came, uh, look at the context of the verse in Ala Imran. If, if you read the whole page, كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله You're the best Ummah ever brought out for mankind because you enjoy what is good, you forbid what is evil and you believe in Allah Here is the verse ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون And if the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians would believe like you, it would be much better for them now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about those who refused to believe. So, Allah addressed that team, that part, or that group from the people of the book who refused. طيب. Then comes in, Laysu Sawa'a. They are not alike. Some of them actually will believe. And this is the group who will believe in Muhammad Rasulullah. And those are the people like Jeremy tonight, like probably other callers, you know, the people who accepted Islam, the people who said, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. They are not like the first group. Actually, they are not like them. They are not equal. Laysu sawa'a, they are not equal. Min ahli al-kitabi ummatun qa'ima. From the people of the book, ummatun qa'ima. They pray to Hajjud at night. Yatluna ayat allahi ana al-layl. Wahum yasjudun. They make sujood. Yu'minuna billah. They believe in Allah. Wal yawm al-akhir. They believe in Allah in the hereafter. They enjoy what is good for me. Ya'munu bil-ma'raf anhaun al-munkar. So, uh, actually the verses speak about the group from the people of the book who said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Nasa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yani, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us that we invite more of them to, to that bi ta'ala and make us amongst those who act upon uh, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Uh, what is an enjoyable show tonight? I enjoyed it somehow. Uh, but uh, till the next episode, inshallah, let's talk about it. Uh, this will be uh, Monday, inshallah. Uh, it looks like the next two weeks I will be doing the uh, three days, inshallah, because our beloved Sheikh Okasha uh, is taken off uh, to Egypt. And guess what? You will watch him on Huda TV. Uh, inshallah, he's going to. Uh, record some nice shows for Huda TV, inshallah. So make dua for him and his family. He's going to Egypt at a very interesting time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bring him back and, and guard his family, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And again, whatever I said right tonight is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever I said wrong is from myself and shaitan. And please, please, brothers and sisters in Islam, correct me. And I look forward to seeing you once again next Monday, inshallah, the same time. Another edition of Let's Talk About It. Until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.